Good evening. We're going to call the meeting to order. We'll begin tonight's meeting, uh, the CRA board meeting, on Tuesday, May 14th, 2013, at 6.30 p.m. We'll begin the meeting with an invocation by um, board member Woodrow Hay and a pledge of allegiance to the flag. And we'll let Woodrow lead us in that also. Thank you. Please rise. Let us pray. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Most gracious and eternal Father, you are an awesome God. You know the desires of our hearts, and you protect our rights. In your goodness, you watch over those in authority, so that people everywhere may enjoy the freedoms, security, and peace. Father, you guide and you govern everything with order and with love. We ask now that you look upon this board of city leaders and staff. Fill us with your spirit of wisdom. That we always act in accordance with your will. That the decision that we make will be for the betterment of the city and the citizen of this great city of Boynton Beach. And all that agree with that prayer said, Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we have a roll call, please? Here. Here. Present. Here. 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 Yes. Here. Thank you. We now have agenda approval. Any additions, deletions, corrections to the agenda? Mayor, I need to um, pull item 8D off of consent. Okay. Anything else? Uh, I'd like to make an addition, please, uh, to the agenda. And... It will be for a future agenda item, but because of that, I'd like to just give a brief explanation of what I'm adding. <clears throat> I'm terming it the Galaxy Wi-Fi project, and this has to do with a, um, uh, a Wi-Fi project that will cover the heart of Boynton and down to uh, uh, Ocean Avenue, and it's in conjunction with the program that Galaxy is going to put on with its students. And they're providing uh, iPads and things like that for all the students, plus additional computers for uh, children within that area, students within that area, uh, and also can be used by their families. And I believe it fits our mission in that it uh, eliminates uh, slum and blight through education, uh, provides economic opportunity uh, through additional business opportunities on Ocean Avenue and help people within that area uh, become uh, more job skilled and job ready. And it's an opportunity to, to uh, um, partner with the city and the school board with, I think, a very worthwhile project. And that would be for next, that would be a future agenda item. Future agenda. Thank you. And, and let me be specific. Are we talking about the next agenda next month? Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yes, because there's a time frame. It's a short time. And I realize we don't have the budget. And if everybody works together, we'll all rob Peter to pay Paul. But something I think we need to discuss and consider. Chair, yes. I'd like to pull uh, item B, B? Uh, under consent. Under consent, okay. Also, I'd like to. Uh, oh, is item D already pulled? B and D has both been pulled. B like yeah, in boy, yes. okay. D like in dog has been pulled. That's fine. Anything else? That's it. A motion to approve the motion agenda as amended. Second. second. A motion second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? So the motion is unanimous. Informational items by and their disclosures by board members of the CRA staff. Uh, let's start with uh, start on my right here. Go okay. Ahead, Mark. Okay. Um, I have no disclosures, conflicts uh, of interest, or anything like that. Under informational items, I would like to welcome uh, Scott Klein, uh, who's in the audience, our new economic development director. Scott, if you'd wave to everybody. Um, he is a great addition to our city. Uh, I know Scott's work firsthand, and I'm glad to have him as part of our team here in Boynton. And welcome, Scott. 
Um, also, I bring some good news tonight in that the related group has done in three months what Waterways Investment could not do in three years, and that is they have sold 80 units in the former promenade, now um, uh, Casa Costa. Uh, they sold 80 units in three months, and that's a total purchase of just under $25 million that has been invested in our city, and, um, and a, about a third of that is from people that are moving from South America, Brazil, um, Argentina, as well as people from the New York, New Jersey metropolitan area. And that's a positive thing because now that puts it at 152 units that have been sold in that uh, property. And that is helping our economy and it's also putting more people on the street to spend dollars at the area businesses. So that's a nice, some good news there. Some other good news, I'd like to congratulate um, Kelly Smallridge with the Palm Beach County Business Development Board. She was recently recognized as by the governor as a um, got the ambassador award because of what she has done in bringing jobs to the state of Florida as well as bringing specifically jobs and new businesses to our county. And as we all know, um, she has a very good working relationship with our staff and with our board. And I want to commend Vice Chair Hay, who, when that wasn't the case, picked up the ball and made it the case. And uh, it's always good to see Kelly receiving uh, recognition in Palm Beach County, getting recognition, and it eventually trickles down to Morton. So um, also I want to uh, commend, I attended the Red Hot Blues Cruise and volunteered. Uh, it was a success in spite of the weather. Uh, I want to thank the wonderful chairmanship of Mr. Buchanan, the many volunteers, including Enid, uh, Judy Saxton, Ray Whiteley, Vicki Hill, Teresa Utterback, Vivian, and her wonderful husband, the fabulous Margie Walsh, and a special kudos to Joe Casello and his lovely wife, Josephine, um, that volunteered uh, several hours, both at our sponsor tent and at the beer and wine area. And i got to tell you, Joe, your daughter made an impact on a lot of people. Uh, you've got, you and your wife are doing an excellent job in raising Trinity. She is a wonderful child, and I don't brag about people's children. I think the last one I bragged about was uh, the vice mayor's grandson. Um, and so it's not that often that I do that, but I will tell you that it was a pleasure talking to her, seeing her have fun, and... She she's just a wonderful young lady, and I want to say congratulations to you and your lovely wife. And also, you stepped up and showed leadership in action by volunteering that day, and it was appreciated by the chamber. It was appreciated by all the other volunteers as well. And so give your wife a big thank you and your daughter a big hug, okay? Thank you, and uh, I'd just like to say we totally enjoyed the day. It's a great event, and I can only see this getting better every year. It was a great way to start off. And uh, we really have something to build on here. And uh, next year with a little bit more marketing and a little uh, uh, better help from the weather, I think it's really going to start taking off. Uh, and uh, I'm up for the beer and wine tent again next year. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I have two other quick things. Um, I participated in the Move On uh, Boynton Beach, and um, it, was, it was a nice event as well. Um, board member Merker kind of raced through it um, and showed us how great and in shape he is, and the rest of us were puffing and dragging and all that fun stuff. Although I guess I should speak for myself because the mayor did hold his, uh, the vice mayor did hold his own that day. Thank you. Uh, but uh, I, uh, it was a very nice event. We actually got some good weather for it. It was, it was quite enjoyable. Um, and last but not least, if you haven't bought your tickets for the Taste of Boynton Thursday, buy them now. Uh, you can get them through the chamber on, online. You can also, uh, they are $40 per person now. Um, the event is going to be at Indian Springs Thursday evening, Indian Springs Country Club. We've got, uh, I believe, 19 or 20 restaurants plus um, the wine cellar. It's a, always a fun event, and so I encourage everybody to go, and we'll, we'll see you there. That concludes my informational items. Board Member Fitzpatrick. No contacts with uh, people currently on the agenda and no informational items. Thank you. Board Member Hay? No disclosures, but uh, 
just add a few things to what Board Member Carol George uh, said. I did, on April 23rd, I uh, attended the, the Arbor Day uh, out on the ocean and uh, participated with the kids uh, from uh, St. Mark's and planting uh, trees in honor of some of our residents. And that was uh, well attended. Uh, then on a uh, couple of days after that, I attended the, uh, the, the Earth Day extravaganza. Uh, that was at uh, Mangrove Park, and uh, the, uh, the mayor and I uh, attended that, and that, that was, uh, I learned a lot from that one. And I'm probably have mentioned this again at the commission meeting, but we had the chili cook-off. And uh, let me tell you, that, that was <laughs> very interesting. Um, some were good and some, some were not bad. so good. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> overall, it was a challenge. Uh, how many did we have to? to uh, 19, 19. 19 different somewhere, chilies. Somewhere, somewhere. And let me tell you, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't recognize some of them. I mean, they were, they were very interesting. But overall, it was a great activity. They uh, raised a lot of money for charity uh, and the uh, fire, department, fire department did a great job. Thank you. Board Member Merker. Uh, simply and to the point, uh, many of you know what I do professionally for a living, which is insurance, which is based on everyone's health. The opportunity to walk and to run is healthy. It brings people together. And the key... The key to all of us who come to the meetings, who participate in the meetings, is to stay healthy, happy, and wise. So my participation as a senior citizen is to show that, um, thank God for God, that it gives us the chance to stay healthy, happy, and wise. And I thank everybody for letting me participate. Board Member Costello. Yes, I also was at the uh, the firemen's, uh, and uh, it's a small world that we live in. Uh, there was a couple of uh, firefighters who I worked with in my career up there in Worcester, Mass., who were in the fishing term, who actually had a boat entered in the fishing term, and so it was great to see them. And, uh, you, know, you know, getting back to this uh, volunteering uh, thing, it's so great that we have these events, and you get out there, and, and you're meeting people, and... Uh, it's just it's just great. We have we live in a great city here and it's a great way to promote the city and I'm looking forward to having more of these type of events and having more volunteers out there and they're really getting the public involved. It's really exciting times for us. Thank you. Board member Buchanan. Uh no conflicts, contacts or relationships to disclose. Um uh, I did attend the Red Hot Blues Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> for fifteen hours. Yeah. <laughs> At least. Plus. <laughs> Thank you. And that was just a day of. <laughs> I just want to remind the board that tomorrow at 10 a.m. at the Intercoastal Park we'll have the police award ceremony. Anybody like to attend, we'd love to have everybody there. Um, with that, we'll go to announcements and awards. Good evening. Kathy Biscuti, Special Events Director. Thank you all for volunteering for the Pirate Fest. Yes. <laughs> Nothing like starting early, Kathy. <laughs> Nothing like starting early. All right. <laughs> Our last Ocean Avenue concert is this Friday at the Amphitheater. We have the people upstairs who are a very popular local group. They have a good following, so we should have a nice crowd. The weather should be okay. We haven't had the greatest season this year, that's for sure, <laughs> but uh, looks like a good good. Uh, night on Friday, 7 to 9, the people upstairs, bring your folding chairs, blankets, Little House will be there with food and beer and wine, and we'll also have a food truck that will have all the other drinks and desserts and things like that. Um, so, come on out. Any questions? Questions? Just kudos on another good year. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Okay, uh, at this time the chair would like to have a motion to approve the consent items A, C, and E. So move. Second. I have most second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the motion is unanimous. Oh, so now go to item B, which was so. Uh, Mr. Aye. Chair, I, I screwed up. Aye. I did have, there's one small correction to the minute, minutes. Oh. On page seven, um, on the minutes itself, uh, or page two of the minutes, page seven on our thing, the next to last paragraph says, Blues will be provided by uh, said top uh, 
clubs. It said top bands. It should have been word clubs. Very minor, but get that. Sorry about get that. that. Those minutes. Correction to the minutes. He'll get in touch with him later. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Item B was pulled by Mark. Uh, yeah. Kara George. Um, I I pulled this for a reason. I I would like to get an update on the cost of um legal fees on the Lisa Bright case that we've paid out to Jim's firm. And I know we paid the insurance firm a $5,000 fee, um, but we need to put this thing to bed eventually. And, I mean, I know things have to take their legal course and everything. I just want to know what kind of money we're spending both with Jim's firm and, and if you can elaborate, if anything, on the insurance. Harris, Finance Director. I can answer part of your question. I do not know how much our insurance company is paying the uh, attorney that's representing the CRA. I'm not privy to that information. But the CRA has spent, as you mentioned, the $5,000 deductible that we paid directly to the insurance company for the insurance. And uh, Jim's firm, we've paid to date a total of $21,000. So we paid so far $26,000 towards this litigation. And we've also had the premiums increased by 300%. That's correct. Our, that particular line of insurance, which is called um, Public Officers and Employment Practices Liability, went from $9,000 to $25,000 in this fiscal year. Not quite 300 but in that ballpark. Um, the sooner we can get this thing put to bed, the better off we will be because we need to focus on the positive things that we're chartered and that our mission statement has to deal with. And I just wish this thing could go away. Um, the case is scheduled for a mediation conference. They're working out the details of it. The parties agree to a mediator, and it will be scheduled in the near future. Thank you. A motion to approve item B? A motion to approve. Second. The most second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the motion unanimous. Item D? Uh, the, uh, Mayor, director. I pulled that because we could not confirm that the liens had been paid as of this afternoon. We were trying to get a hold of somebody to confirm the liens were paid, and um, legal has confirmed to me that they're paid. So I just needed to – we don't approve um, any kind of grants to businesses with liens on them, so that's why I had to pull that. But he, sitting here, we just figured it out. There's no liens. No so we can approve. That property went through a bankruptcy proceeding. I was able to pull up the court order that cleared the liens and have confirmed that additionally th uh, by um, contact to the uh, city's bankruptcy attorney. It's the old Ralph and Roses yeah. for those of you who don't know. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Discussion, please. Um, this um, is the applicant here. No. Um, uh, Vivian, does that design that we see here uh, meet our design guidelines? You know, CRA has design guidelines that uh, you know, I think we were all uh, shredded, envisioned, and meeting to death to get. And, <laughs> and we have them out here. And as as I look at this drawing, that does not meet what I think are the CRA guidelines. And so I don't want to see us pay somebody to not even meet our guidelines. Now, I, would rec I would ask that uh, maybe we table this and uh, have the applicant come and talk to us about it or something like that. Well, just for a point of clarification, the design guidelines are really more geared to um, a new building. This Basically, they're removing the old mansard roof, and what you have left is probably the original square building that was built. I, I'm not sure what year but they're putting an eyebrow back on it, um, modernizing it, so to speak. Um, the old mansard roof is probably something done in the 70s. Um, does it meet the design guidelines um, for a new, newly constructed building? No. Um, for rehab, um, the roof, a flat roof is not what we would want for a newly constructed building, no. But this is actually a building that is, um, they're taking off the 70s stuff and just cleaning it up and painting it, essentially, um, a retrofit, so as Mark says. Um, there's going to be these type of projects that are not necessarily going to 100% fit in that 
kind of thing than where you have a building that is you're not reconstructing it so it's not 100 percent going to fit into the roof line the fenestration because they're not replacing all of the windows or reconstructing the building so you know this is ralph and rosie's if anyone remembers how that looked <laughs> so, i mean in my opinion this is a, an improvement and it's a it's a good quality solid business and um, it cleaned up the liens and it cleaned up the mess that was there um, this is an interim use in redevelopment there's stages that you go through we're not exactly going to do federal highway all five miles of it with Seaborn Cove for many many years so you're going to have these little projects that are going to be rehabbed so to speak um, and this is one of them um, if anyone remembers um, Sunshine Square was going to be a mixed use project but it's that because of the economy it didn't happen but what they did didn't necessarily meet our design guidelines but it's an interim um, redevelopment of that site until some point it will probably be a mixed-use project like Las Ventanas so you're going to have that in redevelopment the phases of it that will it won't, won't be all done at once so I think we have to leave some room for these smaller businesses to be able to do these type of projects that's, that's I, I, I don't disagree with that my uh, as a matter of fact uh, all of you know I'm a big small business that's uh, often one is a uh, strong small business back uh, the uh, but my only point here is that uh, and of course we you know I don't expect them to put a, a, a hip or gable roof on that to go with the uh, our decided guidelines because it is uh, somewhat interim but it doesn't have to look quite that industrial either I mean I think you could do some cosmetic things that would make it more appealing uh, more compatible with our desired guidelines. That's all I'm saying. And this still has to go through P and D, if I'm not I mistaken. I think this is no. a minor mod. Oh, so it's a minor site yeah. modification. Yeah. So then it goes through right. staff. It won't go through P and D board. Right. 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 And P and D that's, doesn't. That's a concern. If we could let, um, I think if we could let P and D staff know the concerns of Mr. Buchanan, because um, it's not a P and D matter, though. Right, it's not. No, it, it won't go before them. To so, uh, and and P and D doesn't have anything to do with our design guidelines. Right. It's evidenced by the building that we occupy. Yeah. Which is a, an example of a building we don't want in, C, in the CRA area, but we're there for ten years. Question, please, Vivian. Matt. Matt, 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 oh, Merker. I apologize. Uh, question: If um, we vote for this, and what? Uh, uh, Mr. Buchan uh, Buchanan uh, is suggesting, could that can it play together without us holding it up? Um, we can we can uh, table it and we can ask the applicant to work with us to come up okay. with some different designs. That's okay. something you can do. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to make that motion. Well, we already have a motion on the floor, don't we? But I'd, I'd like to make a motion. We table it and staff do that. Second it. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor. Aye. 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 All right. Still, the motion unanimous. The table. The table. Yes. The table. Yeah. Okay. That takes us down to informational items. Any questions on public comment log, media outreach and editorial coverage, special events recap, FRI regional meeting, CRA board and basics training. And just want to remind this, the board uh, that's this Saturday. This Saturday it starts at 9:30 at the PGA. It's at the Double Tree on uh, Double PGA. Tree Hotel on PGA Boulevard. Uh, 9:30. It's all aboard. Everybody's been registered. Yes, everyone's yeah. registered. Everybody's registered for it. So, just reminding everybody. And okay. you do get mileage, so we put it. <laughs> you will get mileage paid, paid by us. Okay, that takes us to uh, public comments. Anybody in the public wish to address the board? May we do so at this time? Please give your name and address for the record. Good afternoon. Mike McCray, 806 Northwest 4th Street, Pointe Beach, Florida. Former board member of the CRA. I'd just like to say to each of you, I'm glad to see that you all are keeping Boynton on track where I left it. I'd like to say <laughs> to Mr. Kerry George, thank you for all your current events. I see one thing has not changed. You're still attending everything. Thank not you. Quite, not quite. I'm actually cut back. Okay. Anyone else wish to address the board at this time? Seeing none, 
We will close uh, public comments, move on to, uh, there's no public hearing, old business, item 13A, consideration of renewing lease with the Jesus House of Worship. It was tabled on April 9th. I need a motion to remove from Motion to remove from table. If I may just say a few words on that. Well, we've we got to remove table. it from okay. the table. I'll so second, I'll second. Right. I have a motion and a second to remove the table. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Show the motion unanimous. Uh, board member A. I, I just wanted to uh, thank this board for allowing me the opportunity to uh, discuss uh, with uh, that staff at, uh, at the um, Jesus House of Worship. Uh, staff member Mike Simon and myself had the opportunity to sit down and talk with Reverend Evans and Reverend Ed and Reverend June uh, at that particular property. And since uh, I fellowship right across the street from there at 900 North Seacrest Boulevard, mm -hmm. and there at 1000 uh, North Seacrest Boulevard, I thought it was necessary that we uh, end this thing on, on, a, on a good, positive note. And so we discussed with them uh, the CRA uh, board position uh, with regards to the future um, lease, and, and uh, again, uh, we end it on a very positive note. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we end it with prayer, uh, and uh, I thought that was uh, uh, highly unusual for them to uh, agree with the discussion that we had. I know that we could have gone in there and made the decision, but um, I just want to thank this board for allowing me to um, to establish. Um, a good naval exit. Thank you very much. Okay, anybody else? Chair? Yes. Uh, motion to terminate the lease with Jesus House of Worship uh, for, just... for the property located at 1000 North, uh, North Seacrest Boulevard and allow five months to vacate the premises. Second. I have a motion to second. Discussion? I just want to say that uh, I appreciate the efforts of uh, board member Hay and whoever else was involved in talking with them. I just feel like uh, had I been here way back when this was originally taken care of, I probably wouldn't have been as lenient. I figured we paid, I think it was $300,000 for that property and then rented them back to them for $10 a year or something like that. And uh, and so, and then, and had they been holding services, that might be understandable, but evidently he turned around and rented it out to a different house of worship. And it's, and it's probably, I don't know what he rented it for, but I assume, I bet it's more than $10 a year. So, so I guess I would not have, had they been here at the beginning, I would not have been as lenient and, and let them all this time have that. And, uh, I think we're being extremely, uh, gracious yes. to leave them for another five months. Uh, you know, if, in any other business deal, I don't think I would have done that, but. If I may? Yes. Um, the, Pastor, the pastor that was there, Reverend June, I'm not sure they were paying uh, Reverend Ed and Reverend Evans any particular amount of money for that. That was not, uh, it was done on a uh, in kind place. What they did, in essence, they relocated to a new uh, building, uh, Reverend Bowie's old church on 10th Avenue. And because that, that transition, they uh, allowed. Reverend June, I believe it is, yes, to use that bill in that no cost. So I don't think there was any exchange of monies there. Is that is that right, Mike? No, sir, that wasn't disclosed to us. You're right. That, that, they didn't disclose any other type of arrangement other than to continue under essentially the kindness of the same uh, deal that we were uh, extending to Jesus' house. They essentially passed that on to Foster. These were people that were in Jesus' house of worship originally, who then started uh, ministries under that umbrella, I guess, if you will. So there was uh, nothing was disclosed to us that there was any other arrangement. Matter of fact, the insurance that uh, is shown to us each year was still under Jesus House of Worship's insurance. So if if there was something else happening, it, it was not disclosed to us or represented that that was the case. If that's any consolation. Okay. Well, I may have gotten faulty information. I understood he rented it to another another congregation, but either way, it's. Uh there's a motion to uh, yes, sir. to terminate the lease and give them five months to vacate. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? So the motion is unanimous. Thank you. Okay, yeah. consideration of responses to the RFP for 211 East Ocean. 
Oh, we issued this RFP for 211 East Ocean Boulevard, otherwise known as the Magnuson House, on January 8th. We received um, two proposals on April 22nd, one from Orange Studios and one from Telluride Bar and Grill Project. Um, the first proposal, which was submitted by Orange Studios and Robert Wolfenden, is suggesting a live work for the property um, in three phases, phase one being the, ho the house itself, phase two being building live work behind the property itself, and then phase three, building on the property just west of 211, which is vacant, more live work units. Um, that is um, in the first phase, um, Blaze McKinley is an architect, Orange Studio. He's proposing to, um, I believe, have his um, architectural um, office there and rent the upstairs to someone, maybe himself, and he's offering us $45,000 for the property. The second um, proposal is Telluride Bar and Grill. They are proposing a barbecue Tex Max. We weren't quite sure about that. Um, so it's, and that's Scott Sogard, David Harmon, and David Bavarnik. And <clears throat> they're suggesting a 150-seat restaurant, which is basically the um, concept we already have kind of sketched out with REG Architects. And um, they're proposing $1,700 a month rent on a 10-year lease with um, four 10-year options to renew and an option to purchase um, at the uh, current appraised value after um, within the first 10 years. Um, they both are requesting that they use the $186,000 that we've set aside for the project, uh, 185, sorry. Um, both proposals are found to be in compliance with the general response criteria. Um, there was some key financial information we feel um, was lacking. Um, we asked for some via email. Um, from both parties, and you can. There, it's in the back of their response. Um, I see Blaze McKinley is here, and he would like to probably make a presentation to you. However, staff is not recommending Orange Studios' response due to its lack of um, foot traffic. It wouldn't create any foot traffic on Ocean Avenue. Um, he's a right now. He's a one-man operation, and in his proposal, he's he said he's only one person. Now, he did send us something late um, this afternoon, very late actually, that said eight employees. I don't know where it went from one to eight, but what he initially proposed was a one-person operation, which this board, not made up of this group of people, but not very long ago rejected um, a high-tech company with eight known employees for that site. So, um, and, and basically with the idea we want a more active use for that site to create foot traffic on Ocean Avenue. So we really felt like one person living there upstairs and one person working downstairs would not create that foot traffic that we really, really want. So we were basically recommending rejecting that proposal. And the live work we not really seen there was no market study for that in there how that would work live work is not borne out very well in Florida at all uh, West Palm has a lot of live work units that are vacant on it's in its downtown um, they are not occupied either by livers or workers so um, <laughs> it, so it has not proven to be a, a, a successful um, unit type for downtown um, so I'm not, not convinced, we were not convinced the staff that this is something we should pr proceed with. The second proposal lacked some very, uh, lacked any proof of financial viability to move forward. However, it is a restaurant and we'd like to see if they could prove um, that they had the funding. And Mike is um, Scott Sogard here. I don't know him to see him. So anyone from the, the Telluride Grill team project? No? Um, they, they were they were not very happy when we asked for additional information in email. In fact, they were very defensive. But we said if they showed up tonight, we had a list of documents, and it's on the um, attachment five of the backup 
that if they did show up and they were still interested, we would say, okay, let, we'll give you, we would like to give you 20 days to come up with this list and we would review it and come back to the board and say, well, it's a, it looks like it's solid or it's not solid. But they didn't show up today, tonight. And I think that says volumes. In my opinion, I've been doing this a long time. If you want to do a project of this size and magnitude, you show up. Okay. I would uh, let me just say that I, I agree with you. I, I would look for a occupant that's going to create some traffic. My whole concept of Ocean Avenue is the shops and restaurants and businesses and some real activity. That's my whole goal from Federal all the way to Seacrest. So I would be in... Uh, in favor of that second one with the restaurant. However, I agree with you. Um, we need more information from them. And I would suggest that we give them until our next meeting to come back, and if they're interested, they need to show up at that meeting and bring and, and have provided the information you've asked right. and to give us a chance to question them. Mr. Chair? Yes, Commissioner yes. Merker, Board Member Merker. Uh, the other thing is on, regarding the, uh, uh, pardon me, the, the live work. Uh, the statement you made, supposedly he has eight people now. Um, it's one. It's two. Well, no, I thought Vivian that said he just proposed um, today that yeah. he has eight. Oh. So yeah, my, po my point being, um, I'd like to see documentation or proof that what he says is real or not real. And regarding the other, as the mayor said and as you said, um, talk is cheap. And where are you? So obviously he or she's not interested. Blaze is here. Oh. <laughs> From Orange Studios. He's the, the first proposal, Orange Studios, is here. He's oh, here. okay. If I'm you sorry. want to ask him a question, he can come down to the podium. Okay. You want to ask him a question? Yeah, I'd like to, if you don't mind. Would you want to come forward? He'd like to ask you a question. To he, Mike. He's got a presentation. Question. We need your name and address and uh, ask a question. I apologize. Thank you. Uh, Blaze McGinley, 4110 Argyle Drive, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We quit. Go ahead. May I? Thank you. I'm sorry. I keep interrupting. Well, that's all right. I, I apologize. thought he was going to present something. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see what you present. And let me move from that point. You go first. Okay. into the mic so oh, we can I'm record sorry. it. I'm so sorry. Um, I guess I'll start. Um, my name is Blaze McGinley. I'm a registered architect in the state of Florida. I have 16 years experience in architecture and development. I've successfully executed tax increment financing and uh, CRA funded public private partnerships. Um, you know, as part of municipal urban renewal strategies. Um, and on this project, I'm partnering with Bob Wolvington. He's a uh, licensed contractor in the state of Florida and a uh, commercial property owner manager in uh, Florida, Texas, and Utah. Um, real quick, I see you guys move fast. I love that. Um, I grew up on the north side of West Palm. I went to Suncoast Community High School in Rivera Beach uh, the first year of their uh, magnet program. I went out to Texas and uh, built my company. Uh, I currently work out in Fort Lauderdale, and I'm looking for that right environment you know, to build my company. In the last 15 years when I was out in Texas, I learned a lot about how these smaller projects can help realize the goals of the master plan in the city officials and how um, a multidiscipline team is required to make the economics of these things work. Um, Ocean Avenue District has a great foundation to build. It's got city services. Um, it's adjacent but not on the thoroughfare. Um, pedestrian friendly, affordable cost of living, and of course the proximity to the natural amenities, you know, which is why I'm here from Dallas. Um, the, in my experience, the hardest part is assembling the uses and get the right mix. The right, the right use will not only address the needs of the existing neighborhood, but have a plan for growth that matches the goals of the district. And so we need a use that, uh, um, that uh, 
appropriate to the amount of activity day and night that uh, that's built around community building with people interacting in a commercial and social setting. And so I, I totally agree with you about the amount of foot traffic and the amount of activity. Um, and uh, and I think that it needs to be an increment, an incremented growth, you know, as far as being able to address or respect the needs of the existing people on that street. And, you know, I, I do agree that at, at some point, a 150-seat restaurant is, will be a good idea, but that seems very um, uh, aggressive for right now. And so... To that point, I'd, I'd like to run through kind of my proposal. Um, I do ag- I do acknowledge that the um, the first floor of the Magnuson House would be uh, um, office, and the second floor would be a one bedroom apartment. And I offered to house my offices there just as a as an example. But um, in all honesty, I'm hoping that uh, through uh, relationships with uh, um, with the business development groups and the CRA, that we could collect the type of uses to create a real, um, almost a business incubator, and not centered necessarily around an art idea or any particular use, but really more about supporting businesses and building the community. And so I see this as, as just another step in the int- incremental growth of Ocean Avenue, where at the completion of phase two, this will be the most active site um, pretty much on Ocean, you know, except for City Hall. Um, but then at the same time, it allows for growth, respects the existing neighborhood, and addresses the needs for the future. Um, so, uh, you know, one of the things I'd like to point out particularly about the project is the Florida Garden. Um, being an architect, you know, and, and um, having a, uh, you know, uh, having a responsibility to protect the historic nature of, of what makes a city. And so you can see by, by my proposals, you know, I, I respect the Magnuson House. I surround it with a Florida garden that um, um, what it does is it, it creates um, – it creates areas for planned events, you know, small social gatherings and whatnot. But then at the same time, it's really about um, random social interaction and an ability for the residents of the live work to be able to interact with the community and create a dialogue and and really enhance the amount of, um, of interaction that happens on Ocean Avenue. And then in conclusion, I see this project, not unlike my earlier projects, where I was able to leverage um, planned municipal improvements and really really be able to monopolize on the momentum that the city has already created by reinforcing the pedestrian elements, um, connections to parking garages or parking lots. And and again, it's really more about community building and, and, uh, you know, and a, a, a regulated um, incremental growth strategy as opposed to going in and, I mean, you know, a, again, a 150-seat restaurant, that's, that's a lot of impact. And, and I agree that, uh, that, um, that that does create a lot of activity, but to what end? I mean, how many restaurants does it take to make an overlay district? A lot. Yeah. What do you do for a living? I'm an architect. I'm and that's what you want there, your office? Well, not necessarily. I, I would rather see a more active use. I mean, and the first thing that pops in my mind is a flower shop, but I know we have one right down the street. Okay. But, but okay. something of that end, something with a little more activity, but at the same time not not a... Uh, and, and go over the factor of upstairs and downstairs. Uh, uh, the question of living is a question in my mind. The question of... Having two businesses, one on the top floor, one on the other, I understand more. No, actually, no, we're not really allowed to have a business on the second floor unless we put in an elevator, which would be cost prohibitive. And I felt like it would kind of pull away from the historic nature of the building. My intent was to try to keep the existing Magnuson House as original as I possibly can, inside and out, but at the same time to be able to activate it at 100%. And to do that, the first floor is 
is a commercial space, whether it be an office or retail. And then second floor is a one-bedroom apartment, com either completely separated, if you prefer, with a separate access in the hall and yards, or if we had a single tenant who would like to office downstairs and, and live upstairs, then that's also an ability. Board Member Casello. Uh, can you just explain real quickly, live work? What Absolutely. The the last um, the last chapter of my proposal has kind of had definitions in it because it does kind of get a little boring, yeah. but uh, but I'd like to I would like to answer that question as related to this specific project. Live work is where you where you live and work in close proximity to one another, and it happens in three different ways. It's either live with which is phase two of my project where it's really more of a loft style and you're kind of you know, you're you're all in the same room, and and it's uh, it, it's more of a uh, of a studio style. And then the second version is uh, is live um, is live near, which is actually the Magnuson House, where the two uses are completely separated. And so the theory becomes those can be two separate individuals, or they can be the same individual, whichever works out better. And then the third the third type is uh, is live adjacent. I think, and the, the concept behind that one is, you don't necessarily live connected like the um, like the Magnuson House, but the theory being you could live in one part of the of the development and work in another. And the concept, I mean, and again, the root concept behind live work is that we get people involved in the community who live and work. They aren't out on the highways. They're on their bikes. They're going to the beach. They're eating at the restaurants. So that's that's really my intent. And these residents that would be living in these units, are these? Could you explain that where they come? You know. Absolutely. Um, there, it's because the live work um, concept is able to spread such a wide net. Our goal is to attract as many professionals as we can. Um, the the easy answer would be to try to um, try to come up with a concept that's uh, that's built around um, art or or things like that, where galleries and whatnot. But I, I haven't found those to be very sustainable. Um, my goal would be to work directly with the CRA and the business development groups to create, you know, uh, almost like a business incubator where we have small businesses working together to. To uh, to cr try to create synergy, um, and you know, and really create a, a, a solid base for for businesses and, and entrepreneurial attitude, while at the same time, again, creating a real sense of, of where you're at and and what you can provide. So these would be professionals that we're trying to attract into these uh, units here. <laughs> Not unlike myself. Uh, so basically, they're rental units. That's, they are. Okay. They are rented. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Lucan, did you have some comments? Uh, yeah, just so basically what you're saying, first of all, I need to let you know that, that uh, the building you show there on the left side there, the, the new one, yes, doesn't meet our guidelines. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> but that's a beside the point. But basically what you're saying is that you expect us to be small shops downstairs, residents upstairs. And what is going to be, bring business to those small shops? Uh, See, we don't have, I mean, like you mentioned, yeah. a floor shop. Well, we have a floor shop. It doesn't bring any traffic to, or not much to Ocean Avenue now. Yeah. Well, we need something that brings people to Ocean Avenue. We exactly. Say, hey, let's get and in the car and drive to Ocean Avenue. It, I totally agree. And the concept behind the branding, and, and, and to me that's really the, the heart of this, is to come up with a brand and a tenant mix that activates the existing neighborhood and plans for the future. And the way I do that is aligning myself with the business development groups and the CRA to, you know, because I've got the feel or I know that this is a small enough development and the, the costs are um, inexpensive enough that I, I feel like we can be selective in our tenant mix. And if given the opportunities to negotiate with the city, there's no doubt in my mind that I'll be able to, peru that I'll be able to prove an occupancy um, absorption rate. I mean, a, a legitimate I, one. I'm getting everybody first chance, then I'll come out. Board member, hey. Um, <clears throat> conceptually, I think your idea is a good one. I just don't think it's the right location. It's not what I have in mind for Ocean Avenue. Um, I think it would be uh, worth considering at some other location, uh, but not Ocean Avenue. 
Anybody else down there? Yes. Sure. Did you have a comment? Yeah. Uh, board member, Kara Joyce. Um, Blaze, first of all, I want to thank you for showing up. Um, <laughs> but I concur with the vice chair in that I don't think this will work on Ocean Avenue. One of the things that you would have to do is land assemblage with the um, oh, yes. parcel next to it. And, and that's why they're phased. And, you know, and I, I know you wanted to do this in phases. I, I just, I concur with the, with the, um, with the comments of, of the vice chair and with Mr. Buchanan. You mentioned a flower shop. Well, we have three on Ocean Avenue and two others on Federal, As so there's example. five within a, a, within a quarter mile of where you would be. The other thing is, if you're looking at professionals, there are, there are other um, professionals in the area, whether it be doctors' office, attorneys, etc. And the other thing is, you're talking about an unproven site, and when you have an unproven site, you're going to have to have rents below market to attract them. You're also going to have to incentivize it. You're, there's other things that you're going to need to do. And when you talk about working with the business development type of people, this project is not big enough for the county to get involved with. Kelly Smallridge would say, I'm sorry, it's not enough jobs to warrant their involvement. And I can tell you that based on other things that she's made those comments on, um, including our old, old high school right over here. Um, we... I, I do think I, I, I'm familiar with the live work concept and it does work well in certain markets. Um, but in in South Florida, there's a, there's a handful that it's been successful with, and then there's a bunch that are really hurting, where some of those pro projects are in foreclosure, and some of those projects that are in foreclosure are in Palm Beach County. So I don't want to. Like I said, it's just not right for Ocean. And once again, I do respect you for responding to the RFP. I commend you on the work that you have done, you know, in various markets, both in Texas and in Florida. But um, this just doesn't meet the guidelines of what we're looking for for Ocean Avenue. We want to have something that is a generator, that is a destination point, that is a catalyst for other development. That's what we're looking for on Ocean Avenue. And having been part of, you know, all the planning and everything with master plans and the Federal Highway Corridor and all that, we have to have a catalyst and we have to have something that is a destination point. Our destination point on Ocean Avenue is our marina. But we have to have something that connects our civic and cultural stuff with the marina. And we'd like to, and that's where I have a preference for the restaurant because it has an immediate impact. Okay, but I'm also disappointed that they didn't show up. Now I know Mike has had several conversations with them, and I saw the email stuff back and forth, and I'm surprised that they're not here. Um, I'm hoping that something came up, and that's the reason that they're not here. But but I'm more apt to give them the 20 days or 30 days to come back with some stuff than I am to move forward with yours. Uh, um, Mayor, I just want to say about the. We have a lot of residential units on Ocean Avenue now with hardly any retail space on Ocean Avenue, and that's one of our biggest problems, why there's no foot traffic. There's nowhere for us to put business, and the live work isn't, the, isn't that good for living, and it isn't that good for working, and that's why it hasn't worked that well. That's one of the problems with it. Everybody touts it as, oh, it's so affordable and this and that, but with the Florida Building Code, it makes it really hard, I'll tell you the truth. But I want to say that more residential units on their own, which is what they tend to become, is not necessarily going to help us per se. We need to have businesses here, and that needs to be a node of activity because the west end of Ocean Avenue is dark at night. It's very dark with the old high school being dark and the museum closed at night. A restaurant is, we need 18-hour activity, and I think you guys remember Kim Delaney saying that you need 18-hour activity on the street, and that's what we we're looking for. Mr. Merck, Board Member Merker, do you have another? What's the square footage of the building, two floors? 1,700. The, the existing magnus awesome. yes. <laughs> Tiny. Depending on where you measure. Yeah. 1700 bottom, and there'd be another 1700 on top? No, no, no. The Magnuson House is yeah. 1700 total, and then another approximately 5,000 square feet would be phase two. 
behind it. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Thank Appreciate you. it. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, back to the board. Um, what's the uh, board's I, I have direction? a comment about the restaurant. Go ahead. Uh, uh, of course, I would like to see a restaurant there. Uh, oh, no, that's I would nice. accept an interim use of a lease for a couple of years, like with a high-tech firm that didn't get approved. But in the long run, I think that is an ideal location for what could be a very um, tropical, desirable destination-type restaurant, like a smaller version of the Sunday House or something like that. So now let's get to Telluride. That's as far from the concept of the Sunday House or even what I think would be a successful restaurant in this area as can be. Uh, if you go to our property there, and if you were a crow and you flew a mile east, you would be in the Atlantic Ocean, not in a ski slope. And I just don't think, first, I mean, there's no Telluride brings nothing to mind. It's a barbecue restaurant, which you're doing terribly. They go out of business on a daily basis. Uh, that provided nothing that makes me, uh, in this whole proposal, it makes me feel like there's any hope of them even come up with the financials. And if they did, part of our job is not just to get somebody to come in and say it's financially viable and this and that. We need to assess whether it's going to be a successful restaurant because what you don't want to do is have a restaurant come in and be and fail. Uh, that's a killer, uh, and especially when that, we're so embryonic on that street. Uh, so uh, my suggestion is that we should just can the whole RFP and do it over and see if we get better responses. Uh, Fitzpatrick. I have a couple of questions for staff. What, when was this property purchased and for how much at that time? Purchased? Uh, when would, did we buy the Mike? 07? 2007? What was the appraised value? 800 something. We bought it for appraised value. So 800,000 and yeah. and people are offering us now for 45,000. Right. Okay. I think the more important issue is <clears throat> what what are we trying to achieve here? I mean, are we trying to achieve just getting rid of it or you know, just anything? I think we want I think I'm hearing from the board that we want to achieve something greater. And as the CRA, I think that's our role. And there are things coming in the pipeline for the district. In the right down the road, I think that we'll get more interest down for this property down the, in the future. Um, and Tracy Smith Coffee is in the audience. I just we just hired her from Lake Worth. She's been very successful working on Antique Row in West Palm and in the Lake Worth Sierra District. She has some great ideas in the interim of what we can do with the house. Have gallery openings and wine and cheese and you know working with the chamber. <coughs> In the interim, so that, you know, to gain interest for the property and have some active uses there. So it's not, I'm not looking at this as a lost opportunity. I, I would hate to go down the road of a poor opportunity. And that's so, I'm saying, I would think at this point, if they didn't show up, I think it shows that their level of interest is not there. And I would say, let's reject. Let's give it some time. We have some very exciting opportunities coming in the district, and that might help elevate this my, property. My second question is, when is the uh, the parking lot, public parking lot behind it going to come online? When will that be completed? We are in the planning process right now. We have some comments back from the um, planning department. So I'd say, Mike, do you have any? Uh, Mike Simon, uh Development Director of the CRA. The application for site plan approval is in the city now. Uh, we receive comments. We have two to three weeks to respond. It's on schedule to go before the Planning and Development Board either in June or July, depending on the response of comments, and then before City Commission for site plan approval in uh, the two meetings in July or the two meetings in August. So once we receive site plan approval, uh, they're simultaneously doing construction drawings, you know, in response to the comments made by both of those boards. Uh, we assume sometime in September it will go in for permit. And then, uh, so let's say uh, six months after, in middle of uh, 2014, uh, February, uh, March, April of next year. So as the months go. Approximately a little less than a year from now. Yes, sir. 
Uh, my position would be just let it lay till then when there's more more to talk about then. Um, I would agree with uh, Board Member Fitzpatrick um, to let it uh, uh, sit for a while. Um, well, the the second group, were they told to be here? Yes, they, they okay. were told that. Were um, that being said, um, I, I'd like to see us reject both of them. Um, by the same token, uh, I, I think we can work. Now that we have a, a, a development manager for the city and Scott, uh, that he work, he work with the CRA and see what's coming down the pipe. There, there are a lot of uh, projects that I feel that's coming down, and we are looking at uh, a tremendous increase in our permits, which is an indication, and also the residential uh, real estate is picking up. So I just feel with that, it's just a good sign that there's good project down the road to come. So I would say uh, let's let's just uh, sit on it for a while and, and see what we can uh, find down the road about a year from now. Board Member Merker. If I'm hearing correctly, they were invited, they didn't respond. I call that lack of respect. And the reason I, use, I emphasize a lack of respect is the fact that if someone buys a piece of land and there are requirements to fulfill, if they don't have the respect to initially step forward and show what they want and answer questions and what are they going to do when we give the okay and there's things that possibly have to be fixed, they'll delay, stall, and use any other adjective you want. So I show no interest just like they show no interest tonight by being here. I think in all, if I may, uh, Chair, ahead, I think in all fairness, we don't know what the situation is. Uh, it could have been an emergency. We don't know. And I, I hear what you're saying, and I, I agree, agree with you to, to an extent. But uh, they still had would have had 20 days to come up with the additional documentation, which they did not supply. So, but that being said, I, I think we just need to go ahead and and just lay this. Uh, no, I, I disagree with you emphatically. I feel the fact that we have emails and we have iPhones and we have all different means of communication. There's no reason for them not to. Uh, it's a mute. It's a mute point. So we can move well, on. You brought yeah. it up, so I'm I know. responding. I know. Okay. Chair. Uh, yes. I make the motion that we uh, that we reject both proposals. That uh, we revisit this when staff has some interest again, um, because there are some opportunities. One of the things with the barbecue thing that I didn't like was that it was going to hurt one of my friends' barbecue business over at the pantry, our good friend uh, Goran Sims. So uh, I, I had reluctancy when. Because he's operating that on the weekends, and let me tell you something, his ribs are good. Uh, so they would have had some uh, difficulty establishing, especially with uh, with having that competition that close. Um, but I do want to reject both. Uh, I want to move that we reject both proposals and wait for staff to bring back to us when there is more interest. Second. 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 I have a motion to second under discussion. I would just like to say that... Uh, I don't want to just, somebody said something about let's just not do anything for a year. I don't want to lay there idle. I'd like to go back out and see if there's other uh, uh, RFP that other people will come in. I think a board member Buchanan mentioned that. So if some, uh, who knows, you know, maybe next and week. And that's why I was talking about better staff. better idea comes forward. Right, right because so Mike, you've keep talked it open. with Tom Practice and you've talked with others about that site. And I know that I know that we've had discussions with others, you know. Um. To be honest, the, the amount of, of interest that this RFP generated, the, the two people that were most interested responded, and, and albeit one was very late. Um, the previous RFPs, we had about the simil similar level of interest. It's a very um, uh, quiet street. It's a, it's a quiet location for an investment of between six and 800000 to a million dollars to create a restaurant with someone else's money or even partly ours, and I think that there's enough hesitation within the solid restaurant community that we would like to, to be knocking on our door, that it's just it's just slightly premature with the activity on the street now, the, the activity across the street, the kind of dead zone to the 
to the west. We we envision this very active, you know, Sunday house, da da. It's very easy to see. What we don't see around that site is everything connected to da da and Sunday house, or somewhere in Lake Worth or West Palm. There's just a gap of space, and and like Vivian said, when you have the potential redevelopment of the arches or B of A site or some other things around it, where you get this this kind of wave of, of movement. Now, we, we as staff don't want to see it sit. We, we purchased this excited to put 11 people in an office there to invest over $800,000 of CRA funds into our own office, activate that site, have evenings of galleries, go to City Hall, have lunch. It would have been a really neat experience to have that active now for almost almost eight years or seven years of, of movement. So we're we're with you, uh, board chair, on trying to come up with something to activate it. We it's a it's a property that's that's on our main street. It's not it's not getting more beautiful while it's sitting there. It's actually kind of I think personally distracting or detracting from. Hey, come down and invest in on Main Street, you know, and come here. So we we want to we want to spruce it up. We want to landscape it. We want to make it look nice, more inviting to maybe create some more interest from someone that says, "Hey, this would be a place to open a restaurant now." And I I just think with Kenny's and with some of the other things on the street, it we want that that good restaurant tour to come in with a solid concept. But um, I, I'm not sure. That Putting it back out next week would generate five responses that we didn't get this time. Uh, I understand. I'm I sorry, just want yeah. you to be open to anybody who comes yes, in and wants to do that. And, and, and that can happen on. at any time, as it has with old high school right. and other, other I, I may be bringing some ideas during budget about how we can yes, ameliorate yes, some yes, of the surrounding issues. Okay. Next door to us okay. is a vacant lot with dirt all over it. Okay. Maybe yeah. we put grass on it ourselves okay. at night. I, I don't know. So let's go ahead. I think the one thing a city has to do is realize the momentum. And if there is the initiative and the desire and the moving forward that you feel, the Vivian or you would feel, then to rush into something isn't necessarily the smartest thing. As you stated, eight years is a long time to be vacant. But you don't want failure. And so, again, I say that the town here uh, is changing. And it's changing in a positive way, and I don't think we should sit back and wait, and I use that word respect. We want this to town, town to go forward. Anyone who wants to come in and develop should realize that we're behind them, plus we're willing to help them. If they don't realize that we want them, and they don't show the initiative of the respect of what we're trying to do to help them, then they're not an asset to the town. There's a motion and a second on the floor. One, one more, more comment. Just a quick observation. Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, this street's really going to take off once we decide what we're going to do with the old high school. I, I think that's the anchor of this whole street here. Uh, I, you know, and I think once we decide what's going to happen, uh, the fate of that, and we'll be finding out next month or so what's going to happen, and I, I think that they'll they be lined up at our door uh, shortly after. So just for clarification on, on the motion, I, I agree with... Uh, uh, board member Cas Casello, uh, I, I do feel that we need to go with the motion, but don't put a time limit on it. Right. Like you were saying, uh, mm -hmm. Chair, don't don't put a year thing. Cause right. We may get something. Somebody might come up. Somebody might come up with something. Yeah, so that's why that. that's why I made the motion the way I did. Okay. There is no timetable okay. on it. It's based on staff coming to us right. with what the market is coming to them with. Right. Okay. And okay. I trust Mike and Scott and Vivian uh, tremendously with their knowledge and with my, Mike has spent a lot of hours on this over the years. Okay. Uh, you know. We, 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 okay, we have a motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next item. Um, consideration of terms of conveyance of 222 North Federal Highway to One Boyne LLC. Uh, based on our um, the proposal we received for our property at 222 North Federal Highway um, from One Boynton LLC, in discussion with them, um, basically taking their proposal and um, what they showed us and what the board approved, I took what they had said in their proposal and what they showed and the desire of the board for job creation and for um, an office building, Class A office building, these are the business terms um, that I discussed with Davis Camelier, the principal of One Point in LLC. A site plan approval by the city of Boynton Beach. And this is, our property will not convey without these 
conditions being met, just so you know. Um, that the site approval of the office building of at least 40,000 square feet by December 31st, 2013. That's number one. Number two, construction permit approval by the city for the office building by March 30th, 2014. Number three, construction of the office building to begin by May 1, 2014. Now, after the property conveys, the following conditions shall, shall apply. Construction of three water features, public plazas and walkways, and landscaped areas as shown on the proposal submitted to the board on April 9, 2012. Changes to these proposed plans must be approved by the survey board. Number five, inclusion into the site plan of a covered palm tran stop that would be architecturally consistent with the whole of the project. Um, number six, once the overall site plan for the entire site is approved, any material change to the site plan will requ require a survey board approval. Failure to do so um, will shall trigger the reporter clause. And failure to construct the public improvements or the bus shelter shall trigger the reverter clause. Um, the whole point was that our property, which is half an acre and value at four fifty, basically, you know, we're trying we're creating jobs. We want to create jobs with that money or that value of our property and we want to create some public improvements for that money. So those are just the general business terms. He agreed to all of them. We had a conversation on Wednesday, and because I'd sent these to him, so from that, I didn't want to bring an entire agreement that was lawyered up on both sides and cost everybody money until um, I had brought this to you, and he had seen it, and then then we can all lawyer up. So thank you for saving money, <laughs> um, Chair. If I if I may, go ahead, um, we'll make care, George. I would like to move for approval of the uh, business terms that uh, and direct staff to work with legal on drafting a conveyance agreement document to bring back to the board at the uh, next meeting for our, um, our our consideration at that time. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So the motion is unanimous. Um, I would just, uh, for informational purposes, uh, Director, Executive Director, I had a call uh, yesterday from uh, Mr. Knight, who I guess is working with the attorney group yes. out of that way, and he had some concern that it wasn't happening, you know, and uh, I, I had he discussed that with me. He felt like there was some blocks there that it wasn't going to happen. Then I had a call this afternoon from Mr. Camelier from Washington, and he will be in town next week. And he was, uh, I talked to him how, I told him I was disappointed if this was not going to happen. He said he was very much in favor of making it happen. He, but he did have some questions about a few things. And I said, well, this is the time for you to meet if you're going to be in town. So if you would work with the Jim Knight and Mr. Camelier, and because uh, there's just a, uh, the, the couple of things that he brought up I think are very solvable. You know, he he talked about, uh, just, just one of them, he talked about the, the attorneys wanting a six six stories of parking things like that so things are things we need to work out these are in the details so but if you uh if you would set up that meeting you're probably aware of these kind of things but yeah, yeah, and if you think it would help for me to sit in on that meeting i'd be glad to do it i think it's it would help you. um i i would definitely think it would help okay i, I would love to let have me, you there. just let me know when and where a nice calming influence okay but i really think <laughs> uh, we need to make this move okay uh, new business, consideration of a short sale terms from HAP grant recipient Martha Gierich. If I'm saying it right, Gierich. Mike, are you going to handle this one? It's yours. <laughs> um, we actually, and this one, just so you know, oh, my little thingy fell off. My clown nose fell off. The um, actual buyer has changed. Um, that's the only thing that's changed in this. We, but we received all the documentation today, and it's on, on in front of you. We received the HUD statement and the um, contract, so we're good to go. It's just that the buyer has changed. So that's the only thing, and we received all the documentation, so we're good to go. We have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So the motion is unanimous. I have a question, oh, staff, great. about this. The, these kind of uh, agreements are, are, I mean, you know, it didn't work out. Are we in the 
business of doing this in the future, or what, what's the status of this kind of uh, agreement with the CRA and, and individuals? This was a project um, in the north. Um, Is that the preserves? Yeah. Yes, and what happened was this was a for sale townhouse project, and the developer, we have a DIFA agreement with the developer, and he came and asked that the, not this board, but a prior CRA board, wanted to switch it from for sale to rental, low income rental. And that's why, and these people got down payment assistance to buy in that. These are firefighters, police officers, teachers, and now they're in the middle of a low income rental development. And that's what's happening. And staff did not support that, but the board voted to allow the developer to do that. And so that's where you're at. And we said this is exactly what would happen, and this is what's happening. Their their units aren't worth anything, you know. Their units are, will never be worth anything now because of the change in the project type. So all the uh, middle class are bailing out of this project? Um, we have how many now? Are we up to... How many have... 20 total. Um, 20 have already done that. Or Foreclo been foreclosed or short sold. Are there any other developments that the CRA is involved in that something like this could happen? Just infill, just infill housing Individual units. houses, but we haven't had it happen except on one. 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 Yeah. Thank Which you. Which was a fluke. Did, yeah. Did we vote? By the way, that one was a fluke. <laughs> did we vote on this? We did. Yeah. Did we yeah, vote? Did we, we voted vote? on it. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, consideration of Chair, for budget meeting. If I, if I may, um, Jim, I saw Jim Knight come in, and we were just talking about that issue, and I'd, I'd like to know if Jim has any new information on that uh, situation with the, uh, with the law firm. We basically passed, uh, we made a motion we passed to uh, bring back to us that we're going to the, terms, the of land, terms of the land over. So we already voted to do that. So. But I, I was just wondering if he, if he knew of any other impediments or any problems that we can... I think that needs to be worked out between the two parties okay. Okay, okay. before we bring it here. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, dates for budget meeting. Uh, yes, we need to have some consensus from the board on a date for the CRA's budget meeting. We traditionally hold it in August. Um, if you recall, the city's budget meetings are held in July. I think it's the third week of July this year. And um, the dates before you are reflective of the CRA board meetings and the city commission meetings. So I gave you the options of uh, three Wednesdays and a Tuesday or any other date that you can come to some sort of consensus on when we should meet regarding the CRA budget meeting for the next fiscal year. And just FYI, August 14th is the day after the CRA board meeting. So right. Pardon. Right. Um, did you state date yet? I, yep. I, I, there, what, uh, I will state them. Um, I gave you the options of Wednesday, August 14th, that's the day after the CRA board meeting. Wednesday, August 21st, that's the day after city commission meeting. Tuesday, August 27th, and Wednesday, August 28th. And, no. and if I'm, all of those will start at 6 p.m.? Correct, 6 p.m. at Intracoastal Park. At the Intracoastal Park. I speak for myself, uh, all four dates are okay with me. Speak for myself. I don't think any of the dates are right for me. <laughs> be just, just the uh, just a quick question. That uh, Tuesday, August twenty seventh. That doesn't interfere with the uh, commission, the regular commission meeting, does it? No, no. I spoke to Janet, Indeed. and she told me the dates for the city commission meetings were um, uh, Tuesday, August sixth, and Tuesday, August twenty. Thank you. I'm f I'm fine with any date. Then. Uh, I won't be able to do August fourteenth. I would. My preference would be not to do August 14th to go from the CRA to the budget. Would be kind of onerous on staff to prepare the packet and then prepare another packet. So. Well, what? I'm sorry. I'm go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. Want to make it the end of the month? The that the, the last date that you have there. 
I think the 28th is good. If anyone else, no one else has an issue with the 28th, on vacation or... What dates are good for you? Um, honestly, I have to look at my calendar because, I mean, I'll try to be flexible, but uh, I was hoping for business and personal reasons to be going up north, um, most likely towards the end of the month. But again, I didn't dot the I and cross the T yet, so... I don't mean to be evasive. But. Can we oh. take a vote? Yeah, just far as, as far as I'm sitting here, I don't have calendar either, but I, as far as I know, um, August, I, don't, I haven't scheduled anything yet for <laughs> August, so I think I'm open. <laughs> it's just, this is May. I don't look that far. Yeah, you look that far. Either the 27th or 28th looks good to me. Yeah. For August, yeah. I, I do have things already on my calendar. For, I, I'd like right. to make a motion to make it August 27th, which is a Tuesday. Okay, and then you can work on that and see if that works uh, for you or not. We'll see. No. No, okay. Um, just let me remind the board that in September, at our September board meeting, we asked for budget approval for the next fiscal year, which has to be ratified by the city commission at their second public hearing of the city's budget. That's how. That's the process. So we have to get it done. So we, we have, have to get it, it done. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And and I don't have. I concur with board member Casello that the 27th works for me. Um, and I think that by doing it then, it allows staff to that time yeah. from the, the CRA from meeting to the budget meeting. It gives you enough time that, you know, yeah, exactly. So, well, when is that made, 27th? I guess we'll go with that. At least we'll have a, a quorum. For that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. August 27th. Okay, this goes to consideration of issuing RFQ for professional services. Board Chairman, Board, uh, Mike Simon, Development Director. The item before you is uh, for your consideration on issuing a request for uh, qualifications for professional services of architecture, landscaping, engineering, uh, civil work. The CRA has uh, in the past, in 2007, uh, issued an RFQ. Uh, from that RFQ, uh, the solicitations and, and submittals of professional organizations, uh, landscape firms, architectural firms, engineering firms such as Kimley Horn, REG Architects, uh, VHV Moore Sullen. These firms were selected from that uh, grouping, um, from that RFQ, and now uh, we're some six years, almost seven years later, uh, staff feels like uh, it's kind of time to solicit another group uh, and, and another request for qualifications to get some more firms on board or, or, and keep the same if, if they so uh, respond, you know, uh, and are, are selected. But we've got a lot of projects coming up, and um, I think it's a, a good time to, to do that as we head into the next five or six-year kind of time frame. Thank you. Is there? Yeah. Yes. Board member Hay. Uh, motion to approve the issuance of a request R RFQ uh, for professional design and engineering service with submission deadline of 3 p.m. June 24th. Second for discussion. I have a, mo a motion to second discussion. Uh, yeah. M uh, Mike, this would not prohibit um, ones that we've dealt with in the past. This would not prohibit Rick Gonzalez or, or Kimley Horn from continuing on that basis. They don't continue? Don't they would have to resubmit, to right? They're going to continue Correct. their current work orders. Right. They'll, so they'll continue with that, the work orders they have with us if they have any open ones. But they ha they'll have to re you know, we qualify basically. Right. Now, the, the only one that I can think of that has open work orders is Kimley Horn. Rick right. doesn't have anything with us right, and, and, and I can't even pronounce it. VH, VHP does. does. So yeah. in speaking with legal who reviewed the, the RFQ document, what would happen is that those any outstanding work orders would be addressed in an addendum, an addendum to their existing contract if they were uh, not selected. And even if they were under new terms, perhaps there's new hourly wages, there's new terms with travel or reimbursements, it would fall under a newly approved contract and any outstanding work would be addressed uh, under past. Is that right, Jim? On, on, that, on the VHB, that's just pertaining to the marina, correct? That's the Harbor Master Building. Right. That's an and active that's project. The, and Kimley Horn is actively working with us on the parking lot project and, and, and 
Wynton Beach, Wynton Beach Boulevard. Boulevard. And, yeah, I'm, yes. I'm familiar with what Kimberly Horn's doing. I, I didn't know of the name change. I was familiar with MSCW, and I commend them on the fact that every trade show they go to, they put up Wynton Beach as one of their crowning yes. uh, yeah. jewels of <laughs> their sure portfolio, and it, it's great to see that every time you go to the trade shows and you see that. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't know they had a name change, but... Um, I also want to express that we're not dissatisfied with any of the three that we have. In fact, they've done an exemplary job for us, and I'm optimistic that they would continue, and possibly we could add others. Um, you know, the landscape architect comes to mind, a couple other things come to mind. And so I, I too, want to move forward with this, but I also want people to know that we're not doing this because we're dissatisfied. In fact, we've been very satisfied yes, with sir. Rick and very satisfied with Kimberly Horn and, M and the former MSCW. Um, so I just want the, that for the edification right. of board members that weren't involved before. Um, so I, I do, as I mentioned, to do second it and support this. I have a motion to second any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So the motion unanimous. Quick question for the attorney. If uh, on the budget hearings when we have them, if uh, if board member um, could not be here, could he call in and vote over the phone? Uh, no, allowed? there's only a limited uh, availability to call in to participate in a public meeting. It has to be an illness uh, established or some other critical event, not uh, routine absence. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I tried that one already. <laughs> the next one Did the, you uh, get away with it? Is the no. No. We let your wife Con call in now. Consider, <laughs> uh, consider hey. issuing an RFP for insurance brokerage services. Yes. Our, our current contract with our insurance broker is up. It's been five years. Um, the RFP before you tonight is modeled very heavily on the city's last RFQ and RFP. And I had the input and the expertise of the city staff to review it in addition to legal. I want to thank Lori, if she's here tonight, for um, volunteering her staff to do that. I really appreciate the help. Um, this would be for shorter term than our previous contract, a two-year initial term with two additional renewals for an additional two years. And the insurance broker's job, um, among many other things, is to go out into the market and look for bids on our insurance lines that we need, evaluate them, and bring us back the most responsible, cost-effective bids with high-rated companies that can be relied on. Um, so that's their job. And I put additional terms in here that we didn't have before, including meeting with staff at least twice a year, and I want them to be available, and I also want them to have experience in municipalities and other public entities. Yeah, certainly. Um, are you considering uh, bringing in another agency or company to compare apples to apples? And that, that's the purpose of the RFP. And in addition to the public notice, I would reach out to the city's current insurance brokers, make sure that they were aware of this process and that we were in the market for a new broker. Thank you. So I'm asking you tonight to approve this. If you do, we would issue tomorrow. We would come back to the board in July with our recommendations for your review and approval. Susan, um, Chair? Go ahead. Susan, how would this affect our current situation involving our insurance company? It would, the current situation is with our current insurers. I don't believe that it would go to a new insurer, but it would affect the market quote for the business for that particular line. At, at the other thing is, if, say, we decided to s switch horses come July, um, we're in a litigation with that insurance company handling our interest. And it's not, it may go, say, that mediation falls apart like it has a couple other times. Uh, and say we end up in, in court in September, yet we make a decision to so-called switch horses in midstream here, uh, I'm worried about the ramifications of that. It won't have any. Uh, you're, the, the claim was made under a certain policy, and it's pursued under that policy until its conclusion. The insurer is bound by that. If I may say, since that's sort of my field of endeavor, uh, yeah, it's, it's professionalism, and if they're involved with one issue, they have to finish up the issue and do it properly. 
for them not to do it would create a problem for themselves. Even, even though they wouldn't have the business going forward, right. they're still, they still have a fiduciary obligation and all that, correct? That's a good way to put it. Okay, that, because that's, that's what I'm looking at on this. Because this okay. okay. I, have I, I make a motion we approve this. Second. A motion second and discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Show the motion unanimous. Okay, consideration of new commercial construction project incentive program. Thank you, Mayor. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, Mayor. That's okay. <laughs> um, uh, the item before you, uh, Board, is for the consideration of a, of a new uh, economic development incentive program called the Commercial Construction Project Incentive Program. Um, the backup of application and guidelines is there for your review and approval this evening. The uh, CRA has uh, had quite a few uh, grant programs over the years, beginning in 2004-05 uh, with our first uh, program, which was the Commercial Facade Program. And this is information in your backup, but I think it's great for the public to hear uh, as well and, and to, to kind of get out there to further advertise of the success of programs and what we have. Um, in 2005, we started with the Commercial Facade Program, and subsequent to that, in 2009 and 2010, uh, CRA staff worked diligently to f come up with some new ways to incentivize our area and help businesses want to come here, and once they get here, how to help them grow. And we came up with the uh, Rent Reimbursement Grant, the Interior Build-Out Grant, uh, and the uh, Commercial Signage Grant. The Commercial Interior Build-Out uh, and rent reimbursement were job creation grants, so we tied some job creation to those as well as the commercial facade was for simply for the existing structure. Uh, over those years, uh, they have assisted 40, new, uh, 40 existing businesses already here and 18 new businesses. So that's 58 businesses, uh, really with the bulk of them hitting in 2009 to 10. So that's, that's an awful lot of businesses over the last three years. Um, We've approved, the board has approved uh, $730,000 in CRA grant funds under those programs. Um, the match from the private sector, the development community that's, that's taken the small business to the large business like uh, Woolbright Center, uh, the total of private dollars to that $730,000 is $5.8 million. So the private investment is $5.8 uh, 5 million to our 730. I think it's a great value for public to private dollar there. Um, again, through working with uh, businesses over those years and getting to know what they like and what might help them in the future, we kind of brainstormed some more and came up with uh, a program that would assist with some of the site development permit fee type costs for these new um, projects, some of which, like uh, Dr. Martin's um, Veterinary Center was about a million one to a million three. Uh, there are some substantial costs in permitting and impact fees and these types of things that we think um, would certainly be an incentive to come to Boynton to further uh, advance an existing business or to recruit uh, another business like uh, uh, under the scale. So we, we're looking at businesses between the $250,000 investment mark and the two million. Um, of a 3.3% uh, reimbursement of their initial uh, construction value as listed on their application for, for permit with the city of, of Boynton. Um, the guidelines would uh, not reimburse those fees to that percentage until after they've received their permit fees and a CO uh, in completion of the project. So it would be a completely reimbursable type of a grant. There'd be no expansion of funds by the CRA until the project was actually completed. Mike, um, if, if Chair, if I may. Yes. We'll Mike, one of the other things I want to talk about with the, that the public should know is that over since 2004, with these grant programs, it has generated 188 new jobs in our city with the with the opening of these new businesses and the expanding of the existing businesses the other thing is this is this is another economic tool to have in our arsenal there is no reason why we should not approve this tonight it it, it makes sense it is another step in the right direction it enhances and makes our our market better than other markets because not every market is doing this. Many municipalities are not doing these type of things. It differentiates <clears throat> us. It makes us more attractive. 
So I make a motion to approve the commercial business grant program as outlined and the commercial project construction in, in incentive program guidelines and application. Is there a second? Second. second. A motion is second. Any other discussion? I'd just like to say, uh, uh, Chair, that I, this is great to get those guidelines, but just for the record, just remember, submission of an application is not a guarantee of funding. <laughs> it is the responsibility of the applicant to read and understand all aspects of this application and the guidelines. Thank you. Right. And, and that's how the that's how the application starts, folks. <laughs> okay. Before you go any further, we would read that we'd be happy. <laughs> I have a motion to second. Second. I have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Show the motion unanimous. Thank you. Thank the, you. the executive director's report, project status update. Any, any questions on that? Any That's questions just on the status of what's going on. Any other board members have any other comments or questions? Keep up the great work. We stand adjourned. Thank you. We'll see you Saturday.